Good evening, everybody. I have called this meeting to order. It's 7 p.m. Result, the agenda for the March 21st, 2023 regular meeting of Council be adopted. Moved by Councilor Powell, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Yes. Resolved the minutes of the March 7, 2023 regular council meeting and the March 14, 2023 special meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Yes. It's carried. Moving on to 4.1. Resolve that council open the public hearing for bylaw 2, 2023, being a special service levy for the collection of residential waste and recycling material. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? Yes. So therefore, I call the uh, hearing to order. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against bylaw 2, 2, uh, 2, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a rate for the collection of residential waste and recycling material as a special service for the town of Swan River in the year 2023. I ask if any person making representation to the hearing state their name and civic address. So we shall begin if anyone wants to make presentation on the uh, bylaw 2 2023. Are you talking to us out here? Yes. Okay. I've got a couple of questions I'd like so to ask. So then you can come forward? Sure. Uh, first question I would like to ask is... Uh, state your, your, uh, your, your name and your civic address. Uh, Don Mahan. Uh, 317 8th Avenue South Swan River. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, I was just uh, wondering uh, how many objections uh, council got in total from all of our, uh, all the residents from town Swan River. In regards to this? To this, yes. Uh, do we, I believe I have one, one? One. One. Is that mine? Uh, I didn't think that your name was on there. No. Did anyone read the objections as far as council goes? Don't know if you're referring to your own or if you're talking about the individual that they have. Well, I'm talking to any of the, the objections that came to council. Did council read them before this public hearing? Council will have an opportunity to see the objections if, prior to making a decision. You the, will or you did? We will. Okay, like that really doesn't but, help but, us here tonight. But you're here to present for yourself, not for others, so we'll continue with your presentation. Okay. okay. So obviously you didn't get the letter, so you really don't even know what I'm talking about. Is that correct? Did you send a letter? Yes, I did. Okay, well you'll have a chance to, to uh, present that now. Okay. It's really too bad that uh, uh, council don't have this, this letter in front of them to... to Listen to me justifying the reason I'm asking for this is your opportunity for a for comment on why the recycling has gone up in such a large amount. Uh, I'll just read what I have presented. Sure. Okay, I have been a homeowner for two years in Swan River. I am very concerned about the cost of recycling in the town of Swan, Swan River since being outsourced to OSS, who are not a valley-based recycling company. According to the published uh, figures published on the public notice bylaw number 2-2023, the increase from 22, uh, the figure was 218,000 to a, a figure of 2023 was $290,860, which equates to a 33% increase in recycling costs. How could we continue at this, on this course? Uh, whereas the waste management costs, which is, I imagine, garbage collection, uh, has gone up 1%. 
We have a modern recycling facility right here at our landfill. Uh, can we not bring those jobs back to our valley? Uh, would like to see those jobs and dollars stay in our valley. As well, I am sure the jobs and recycling facility would be supported by other local municipalities. It is my understanding that OSS does not separate the different types of material picked up. It is taken to Dauphin, it is baled uh, as one and shipped that way to Winnipeg. If uh, we were to do the same here at our own facilities, those cost savings as well and revenue would be put back into our valley. What, what do you uh, think about uh, the cost of recycling, or maybe you, you can't answer it as a council, uh, cost of recycling going up 33% in one year, can you give me some reason why it would have gone up that much? Well, we're seeing a lot of increases in a lot of items. I don't know if Mr. Harvey wants to uh, uh, go yeah, into that. There is uh, that uh, one is up for renewal this summer. Uh, so there will be a retendering, and then uh, MMSM is going to be taking over for the province. They were talking about 2024, uh, but that's not a guarantee. And when that happens, it'll be province-wide recycling. Uh, so there should be a reduction uh, at that time because it'll be province-wide uh, that the recycling is done. So when that happens, there should be a reduction because it'll be province-wide instead of you know, smaller regions. Could you just speak up just a little bit? I can't hear very well. There's I'm getting old. <laughs> MMSM uh, is planning on taking over recycling. It was supposed to be 2024. Okay. Uh, and I have to talk to them to confirm if it's going to be 2024. Uh, but when they take it over, it'll be province-wide. And uh, so it'll be one contractor, so the cost should reduce significantly because, you know, Brandon will be involved in that. So it'll be a huge source uh, and it won't be just, you know, small regions. So it'll be one contractor bidding on everything. So it should be uh, some serious reductions when that happens. And, and, I, and I will comment also that Council is, is continually looking at uh, this, as, as it was mentioned, that uh, the contract is under renewal uh, or under review for this year. Um, but we're very aware of the increase in costs in recycling. Uh, people want to recycle. Uh, and how we arrive at uh, changing the, the ways of recycling that's still, you know, like I said, is, is always under review and we'll continue to look at other options as far as recycling goes. It's not easy though. Well, I realize that. And in the beginning when recycling was done here in the valley, when they built the new shop and that, that new building, it is at no cost to us other than maintenance. Uh, everything was separated, glass, plastic, paper, everything was separated. Now I can see that being a bit of a cost. And at that point, uh, I was on council with the uh, municipality of Swan Valley West, and uh, Lions Club was taking care of the recycling, and they had asked for small increases in, in uh, recycling costs to s keep afloat, and nobody would step up to the plate uh, to give them any extra money. And uh, now that uh, OSS, now you can correct me if I'm wrong here, I understand that OSS, picks up all the recycling here, they haul it all down to Dauphin or whatever building they haul it to, it's dumped in one big pile, put into a baler like we have out there at the recycling plant unless they've removed it, and loaded onto a truck, taken to Winnipeg, and it's all separated there. Now if we could do that here in our valley, which I guess you will take under consideration when these new, this new contract comes up, um, uh, I would I would greatly appreciate if the council would take a look at that and see if we could reuse that building that's existing and like I said it's not uh, any weight on the taxpayers back because the building is already there 
and I understand that uh, uh, Swan Valley West still participates in paying part of the hydro and the town of Swan River uh, pays part of the hydro and as far as I know at this point Swan Valley West has nothing in there but the town of Swan River uses it for a portion of their machinery. So I'm just wondering if, if those machines were taken out of there and it was put back into service, would it cut costs? Uh, would well, you we, we, we would hope that, but you know, we would have like an RFP that we would go through that process uh, at that time. And, and we would invite anybody that is interested in, in doing our recycling for us. That, that's always wide open. If it's local, absolutely. We would rather have local, obviously. And we went through that process when we first, uh, when OSS came and, and we didn't have that uh, at that time. But if there is uh, somebody local or a company or organization or a group that's interested in doing our recycling for us, we'd be more than happy to entertain that. Yeah. And if it could save us and use our buildings, as similar to what we did before in the past, I would think that council all would be willing to hear what that looks like. Yeah, I just thought, uh, you know, with the price of uh, increases and stuff like that, I know there's uh, extra costs for fuel in the last little bit, but in the last two years, since I acquired that property here, recycling has gone up uh, 96,000 bucks in two years. Now, to me, that seems a bit extreme. And uh, we get uh, about $100,000 back uh, from uh, MSN or whatever it is called. So I'm just wondering if there is a better way and we can keep those dollars in town. Uh, we, um, we're always encouraging people to come here and build a McDonald's or a Tim Hortons or whatever. Uh, they put jobs into this town and uh, I'm just wondering if uh, this might be an option or if it's just more of a convenience to pay uh, an outside contractor uh, than it is to maybe dig in our heels and, uh, and look for another solution. I would not say it's a convenience at all. Like it, wasn't, uh, it was a service that was asked for and that was at the time uh, the organization that we could hire to do the service that the people were asking for. Yes, I would agree that the cost of recycling, you know, uh, if, as we move further north, like, I think that we're probably one of the only communities in, in the north that actually does recycling anymore because it's so costly uh, for facilities and all that to process all this recycling material and, and move it. But still, people feel, a lot, majority, a lot of people feel that they, they have an obligation to recycle. And so that's where we're kind of caught. But again, like I said, in, once this comes to uh, uh, a retendering process or an RFP process that we'll go through, we'll go through that and we'll try to make the best decision that we possibly can and keep the cost down. And like I said, if local wants to or an organization wants to uh, apply or be part of that, we would definitely want to entertain that. I just want to make one last comment. Uh, it's my understanding that if a person in town here has a uh, half ton truckload of recycling and uh, they go over the scale with it uh, they get charged for uh, uh, waste is that correct I can't answer there's, there's a recycling container but they get charged a fee when they cross so what if if people are concerned about recycling why would you charge them to recycle well because well, everybody's paying to recycle those people may not be residential homeowners, right? In the town of Swan River, they may not be paying a fee. So we are, you and me are paying for recycling right now. But you could be outside the town of Swan River and bring your recycling material to the, to the landfill to put into the recycling bins. Therefore, you're paying what we're paying. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe then it's time for us to step back and do what everybody else is doing. Just put all our recycling in the garbage pit and uh, bury it because if it's getting to a cost where we're the only ones that are stepping up to the plate and doing it, uh, there's really no incentive to, uh, to keep doing it. And uh, is, is it, do you think it will change when uh, uh, the Manitoba government takes it over and, and our costs, do you think our costs will go down? Yeah, because it'll be for the whole province. So the bid on that will be a lot better because it won't just be isolated areas. So can I safely say then uh, $72,000 that it's going up this year, maybe 
almost wiped away next year if we, if the government if the Manitoba province takes it over you know that we can't guarantee that but no I'm not telling you to guarantee it I'm uh, that's the assumption I'm not guarantee not asking you to guarantee anything yeah we had to opt into the program I believe where we have to opt out we have to look to see what it's going to cost us okay um, there's well, more information that we need to know from from this with the provincial government okay are you saying opt into the uh, Provincial government program, yes. or stay with the one you've got. That's okay. Okay, I'll I'll leave it there then. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Go ahead. Just for councils, but we did receive the objection last Thursday. It was filed, just simply not put into council on the agenda. So we'll make sure we do that. <coughs> yeah, and if council actually wants, to, they can refresh, and uh, and you will see those on there as well. Okay, anybody further? We may have, uh, they're expecting someone. They didn't have a objection, <coughs> but they did have questions. We said it was it's a public meeting. So well, of course, yeah. So, uh, I do not have a name. on video, we have, uh, I can't see a name, but do we have anybody there to speak uh, to or, or against the um, bylaw 2023? I see there's a number there. Go ahead. All I see is a number uh, 3004. Yes. Do you want to speak? I want to clue in and see what's going on. I just uh, have some issues trying to get into the Zoom. Okay, because we're almost at the uh, at the end of the hearing, unless, uh, unless I have anybody else to speak on it. Tim? I would like to speak. Okay, then come forward. My name is Tim Froze, 1108 Spruce Street. I don't really have an objection or such, but I would like some clarification on a few things. Okay, if this goes through, this um, special levy, are we going to see a reduction in our other tax? This is, no, this is not a new levy. This is okay, so we will... ongoing. It just it has to be renewed uh, each year. Oh, okay. Because the costs obviously change, right? Okay, because it said in your thing that it was removing it from the mill rate portion of the of the tax. So that's right. That mill rate is going to go down then on our regular tax. Not necessarily. So <laughs> go ahead. So it started in I believe it was 2016 was the first year. Mm -hmm. So that was the year that the mill rate went down like if we hadn't done it then the mill rate would have been higher okay and then so since 2016 we've just been renewing it so there's every year there's the mill rate here for all the uh, general taxes or general services and the special service bylaw and then the next year and then the next year so 2016 was the year where it was pulled out so that the taxes were lower or didn't increase uh, by that much. Uh, okay. So this year it's not being separated because uh, it already was separate. Like it, it is separate. So then but that's it, kind of misleading that they're cost. removing from the mill rate portion then. Yeah, it is removing it from the mill rate portion because if it wasn't done, then it would be back into the mill rate. So then the mill rate would go up. But okay. since 2016 it's been separated, so this is just replacing the previous one. So every year we pass this bylaw. But if you look in your tax bill from 2022, you'll see the special service levy. Okay. And this is just updating it for this year. One other thing I want, or a couple other things. I looked at some other uh, towns, and if you've got recycling, say that we got on holidays and I want to take my recycling to the town, they do not charge their residents a tipping fee when they go over the scale to deposit their recyclables. Okay. And another thing is why are we punished taking things like branches over the scales when we're beautifying our property? Like, it's a recyclable material for crying out loud. And every time I take a few little branches from my lilacs and that, I'm charged nine bucks now. And it's hardly even worth it, but I don't want them laying around my yard. 
One other thing, the, the city of Brandon, they charge a $6 ti tipping fee, and now ours is up to nine bucks, and we're only allowed a, a 102 kilograms, and they're allowed 250, which is fairly standard for most of the, the towns and cities. But it gets to me when my neighbor's trees fall in my yard, I gotta go trim the trees, and I gotta pay to dispose of them, because I don't wanna go to my neighbor and say, hey, they're your trees. And it's, I can see if it's something that isn't going to biodegrade or anything like that. Like, I'm okay with paying the recycling fees. Because my wife and I, we've got to the point where we've got maybe one bag of garbage a week now. So we're actually paying more for our garbage pickup now per what we dispose of. Yeah. And then every time I go over the tipping fees, I gotta pay an extra nine bucks as a resident. For, say I'm gone on holidays and I got some garbage that's starting to smell and I didn't get it put away. Well, it cost me nine bucks to dispose of that silly little garbage bag. Why couldn't we have, say, like a card or something that we're allowed up to a certain kilograms as residences and we can go over until we fill that up? Just for these certain things that are out of the norm that we have to take in. Okay, and that's something that we can look at. Uh, Mr. Harvey, did you want to, uh, on these? Yeah, so the branches, uh, they're either chipped or burned, uh, and so they're, everything goes across the scale the contractor's responsible for, so <coughs> everything that goes across the scale, the fees go towards uh, paying for the contractor that's out there. So that's why there's a cost for those. But couldn't we have a separate pile for the branches that we could put off? that doesn't have to go across the scales. Like branches are easily, like you could tromp over them and they, they biodegrade easy. I don't know why we have to pay for things like that. And like I say, I haven't got a tree in my yard, but every time the branches fall, I gotta go over the scales and pay nine bucks for it. Plus my gas to go out there and back. It just really ticks me off. It's not, I don't, like I say, I don't have a tree in my yard and I'm paying for all these disposal fees. Yeah, for that. One other thing too is, what are we doing with the metal? Like, can that money used from the metal sale of the metal be offset? That's for part of, that's part of our landfill contract with the contractor, but we'll stick to the question that you had. Okay. Mr. Harvey was answering. Uh, yeah. As far as the trees that your neighbors, you know, you can discuss that with your neighbor. Uh, but it's just the volume. Like we do have. Uh, compost for grass and that, but uh, for the branches, they don't break down very quickly, and so the volume it would just build up if we didn't <coughs> chip them or burn them. So then there's a cost associated with that, and that's why there's a fee to go over the scale for those items. But if I left them to the fall, the town would pick them up free of charge. Yeah, we do offer that service. Uh, so why couldn't we be allowed a certain amount throughout the year as residences? Again, that could be something that we can we could take away. Okay. You know, I'd say not a decision that we're going to make right now, but definitely the administration could take that away. Like, we're very, very conscientious about keeping your, our yards clean and that. I don't have the well, heart to go to my <laughs> neighbor and say, I need 10 bucks because I picked up four of your branches off the yard to dispose of them. Okay. I guess just to continue answering these questions, it, it is $9 based on principal. The principal or fee schedule is to try and recoup as much as our expenses as we can. And, and that's the fee schedule that was presented to try and recoup as much expenses as we can. The council would have to agree to raise the mill rate for to decrease that service fee. So that service fee is approved on the basis that we would be trying to get as close as we can to running a self-sufficient Okay, one other question. So uh, does a person from Swan Valley West, they pay $100 a year for permit fees? Do they have to pay additional fees when they come to dump as well? When, yeah. they, go ahead. when they go over the scale, anyone that goes over the scale pays. So yeah, if they're coming from Swan Valley West, they'd be paying if they're going over. So they're paying that fee just for the right to dump at the dump? 
Uh, I'm not sure about the $100, but whatever weight they come across with, they're paying for it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's, but there's no one that's exempt from the scale. I want to keep the meeting with the town swan river and not swan valley. No, I'm, I'm, try, I'm just trying to figure out if they, if they get it away for a hundred bucks a year to dispose of no, things, no, they have to then pay, it's not fair to the you. residents of Swan River. They pay town more than you. Okay. Yes. So that's, that was the point that I was trying to make. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, everyone that goes across the scale pays based on the weight. The tipping fee plus the weight. Yeah. Well, like the tipping fee is based on the weight, but if you don't go over the minimum, they yeah. just pay the okay. flat rate. Okay, no, that, no that's, that's fair. Then they're paying yeah. probably the same as we are for yeah. the town of Swan River. Yes, sir. But I was just wanted to just bring that point up. If they're getting away at 100 bucks a, no. a year, then that's not fair to the residents of the Swan River who that are paying. That's true, yes. You know, and we're the ones carrying the burden of the cost. Right. <laughs> Okay. okay, so that's what I, I just wanted to uh, clarify that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think that uh, Councilor Bovic had something. Uh, just a clarifying thing, like this isn't something new. So the price increase on this special levy is roughly $40 per household. This on the special levy. On the special levy. So okay. this levy has been going on for a while. So the increase is $40. Okay. Uh, just on that, has there been <coughs> any conversation with OSNS on how their services could maybe be less of an expense to the town of Swanner, as in, we don't know if those bins are picking up, if they're full every time, maybe they could come every three weeks instead of every two weeks, or to pick up, has there been a conversation in that area, whether they could, I know some people may do more than other, but I don't know if they're hauling fresh air or tonnage or what they're hauling. So if they could do the same amount, pick up the same amount on a three-week basis instead of a two-week basis, would that yeah. lower the cost at all? Yeah, it's a per pickup, so we can change that in a new tender right. to go to three-week if council wants so, that. Could I speak to that? Uh, just let this finish up and then I'll let you go okay. ahead. Okay, so one other thing here. The, year, the recycling material is $290,000. 860 and you recruit a residential waste and recycling of 97,000 or 340. So do that includes the RARS commitment from the province? A certain yeah. amount, uh, uh, yeah. thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay, so the other money comes from the scale and does it come from contaminated soil? Uh I think it's important to realize that those are wonderful questions. They're all, every question is a good question. They're given in polite manner, wonderful. But you can phone any of the counselors, and we'll just direct you to the CAO pool. But you can phone anytime, myself, of course, all of us anytime. And, and if we don't know, which will quite likely happen, Derek has been wonderfully uh, cooperative in that world. You'll have to wait to a formal meeting. We're always available. Um, uh, okay, you can come ahead, Mr. Me? Mahan. Okay, okay, like Mr. Bobbitt just said there, that it's only forty dollars a house sold for it's gone up this year. Uh, that forty dollars plus what it's in the businesses, what it's gone up in the businesses, is seventy two thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars this year. Now, if we continue at seventy two thousand dollars a year, if it's only forty dollars a household, oh man, that's maybe nothing to you. But in 10 years' time, that's $720,000 increase on our recycling costs. Now, in, in 10 years from when from I calculated last year, in 10 years, our recycling is going to cost us, if it continues at this rate, a million bucks a year. Now, uh, that $100,000 that Don was mentioning there, Councillor Bobbick was mentioning about what we recoup, that's peanuts. It's always going to be around that small amount. 
And uh, uh, the thing is, is for that $72,000 this year of an increase is, is just unbelievable from my point of view. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Harvey. So that's the RARS and the uh, MMSM, Residential Recycling Fund. And small amounts for equal oil recycling, other recycling. Okay, uh, Mr. Frost. I would just like you to can comment come on Councillor Bob's. I think he's hit something there. We, we never fill up a recycling bin within three weeks. So a three-week rotation would be make sense. And, and I bet you most of the people never get those recycling bins full within the three weeks. And again, we talked about the contract that we have right now, which is going to be looked at uh, here shortly this year, and that will be an opportunity for us to have a look at that again. That's, that's, that was a very good point I just wanted to make, because that's some that's somewhere we can, where we can look to cut back the cost. Yep. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, just to speak to Mr. Mann there, it's not that $40 doesn't work. I'm just trying to make the point that this <coughs> isn't a new service. It's been ongoing, and this is just the raise of it, whether that's right or wrong. But it is still a raise, like you say, so that's something we have to take into consideration. Yeah, okay. just the amount. Uh, yeah, Mr. Bob. Yeah. Any uh, further discussion? <coughs> Presentations? I would like to know the question why the, re the contaminated soil isn't part of the recouped on this cost here. Because uh, it's not part of the collection. So this is based on, this uh, rate is based on the collection. Uh, the contaminated soil is offsetting against the landfill itself. Okay, so it does offset the landfill. Yeah. So this is, okay. Okay, so further discussion? Okay, if there's no other presentations, then I will therefore uh, close uh, the hearing. One more. One more. <laughs> so, the question was, what raised the cost? I don't know if we ever got an answer. Was it because of the contract? Uh, yeah, because of the okay. contract. Uh, yeah. Because of the contract with OSNS that this has raised. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, so at uh, 7, what time is it, 7.33, I have closed the hearing. There is a resolution. Um, yeah, I'm just looking, it just bounced around here on me. Is that 4.3? Yeah, it's worded quite clearly here. Okay, uh, I hereby close the public hearing for bylaw 2, 2023 at 7.33 p.m. Moved by Councilor Bobek, second by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? Yes. It's carried. The hearing is now closed. Okay, we have another hearing. 4.4. Uh, Result the public hearing on conditional use one 2023 be open. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? Yes. Carried. The purpose of the hearing is to hear represent, representation for or against the following conditional use application to allow a secondary suite in a residential five residential zone, sorry, RS5 residential zone on the property located on lot 13, plan 3227, otherwise known as 225 Crescent Drive. The requirements of section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. A request that any person making representation to the hearing state their name and their civic address. I'll begin the hearing. Anyone? Maybe just kind of give the Cole's version of what we're looking at here. Just before we go, I have, I have difficulty with the concept of, uh, not for I guess anything as following, but. <coughs> what, what, you have two names there. Care of, so who is the owner? The, the first person or the second person? Or is it Julian? Vivian? Vivian? Vivian Rooks? Okay. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Did that, I've just it, never seen it set up like that. Okay, it says so owner just, Vivian and Hayden Rooks on the... Um, which is care of. So I would have thought... And, Hayden and under it. Authority of Planning Act, the owner is listed as Vivian and Hayden Rooks. Okay, so if you can give us... Uh, so Vivian Rooks owns the property and Hayden made an application for a secondary suite. Um, so a basement suite and... In our zoning bylaw, a uh, secondary suite in uh, single family housing. Uh, it can be within uh, the house, or that's what it has to be is within the house. It can't be a, a detached secondary suite, um, but it is a conditional use. And so it comes before council, so that way anyone within 100 meters, uh, if they have any issues or concerns, they can come to council. Uh, just say if they have any concerns uh, but other than the requirement of it being a conditional use uh, everything with the floor plan falls within the zoning regulations do I have anybody making representation for or against the uh, conditional use uh, application to or sorry one 2023 Being none, I will now close the hearing. Result of the public hearing be adjourned and the regular meeting to be reopened. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Yes. Okay, so then we'll move on to our regular meeting. 6.1. Result of the letter from the Minister of Municipal Relations dated uh, March the 7th, 2023, regarding funding available to municipalities be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion. Councillor Boychuk, uh, sorry, Councillor Medwood. Uh, <coughs> I. Um I'm interested in knowing, it mentions kind of early on in the letter that the budget will include annual public safety funding provided by the Department of Justice for Policing Services. It also includes funding support being provided for waste reduction, recycling, and compost programs. So considering the public hearing we just had, and I think it's very clear that I am not a and favored of the costs of our recycling program. Um, do we have any further information on the compost programs or can we be requesting further information on the funding they're gonna be doing for the compost programs? We, we can request that uh, or we can look into that, but we, we're receiving the letter, but um, we can look into what the composting costs or whatever, I think that has come up in the past. Yeah, we, we, there is a, I can put that in a report, we can get the information to you on why the town isn't composting, but uh, we have looked into that in the past, it costs money, so. Yeah, and I'm wanting to know what they're offering for yeah. funding and programming today. Yeah, they're, we would have to wait till their programs come out, but. Right. Uh, this is just the announcement of the budget. Yeah, and I'm yeah. just putting it on the record that when it comes down the pipe and or if we can ask for it, that would be appreciated. Yep. Okay. <coughs> Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Yes. It's carried. 6.2, resolve that the correspondence from Clan William Erickson be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion. No. Nothing? Okay, all in favor? I'm sorry. Um, they're requesting funding. How does this fit <coughs> in potentially? Um, Deputy Mayor Morio might be the one to answer this. But I know we've been reaching out for additional funding for operations. But from what I'm understanding from this letter, this is basically asking for support because they are a stopping point for STARS. 
to be able to refuel in order to say, for example, make it all the way up here to Swan River or further. So how does that kind of play out for us? Uh, in the end, we have, we're in contact with stars and we are in their peripheral. The, the wind has to be in their favor to make it here. But uh, this this is this is not. Uh, I don't I don't know much about their program. They're simply asking us for money to fund their airport. We we don't do that because they're not generally successful. But uh, it's up to council if they would like to fund another municipality's airport operations. Due to stars, they're using that as a, uh, a selling feature that they could be used to fuel up on the way here. But. Would they do that? They've never done that in the past. And it's a letter, again, it's something that if council wants to bring an individual member of council or the airport commission feels that we should, then uh, a resolution uh, at a later date can be brought forward uh, to do just that. I'm wondering if we can maybe bring it to a cow meeting just to see how it plays in because I'd like to know a little bit more about that before we just accept it as communication well you can want. still accept the communication yeah no I'm just meaning but, like that's what I'm asking for is because obviously now is not the time to get into the nuts and bolts of it um, mm -hmm. we're just looking to accept the communication but I just like for it to say like maybe we can bring it to a cow so we can actually discuss because I would hate to see that that impacts our ability to have stars service coming up here uh, and we yeah, yeah we would have to look at info into, like, we'll find whether STARS has stopped at this airport in order to make it to Swan. <coughs> They've never, we have no indication that that's happened in the past, but we will directly ask that question and bring it to If we can have maybe our representatives on the airport commission maybe have a look at that. Thank you. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Yes. Carried. 6.3, resolve the letter requesting support from the Swan Valley Crisis Center be received. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Councillor Boychuk, er, Bob, boy, I'm getting all mixed up here tonight, sorry. Uh, I didn't reach all the criteria. Okay, thank you. Okay, all in favor? Yes. It's carried. 7.7.1. 7 Result uh, Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by who had their hand up over here? Councillor Bobbitt. Discussion. All in favor? Yes. It's carried. 7.2. Result of the February 2023 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Thank you for including the information on cancellations. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Yes. Carried. 7.3, Council and CAO reports. We're starting tonight with Councillor Boychuk. <laughs> I really don't have too much to say, but. Um, so we were talking earlier a little bit about that rural municipality economic development invitation for April 12th. I'm gonna check in with uh, Charlene and see if there's anything else we need to do um, in that regard. Um, we were unsuccessful making the top four for Craft Hockeyville. A bit of valiant go, but uh, didn't quite get there. Uh, so that kind of, it was fun doing it. Got some community <coughs> spirit going. I think it was good. Um, we have had a few meetings with Bryce the Arena and uh, forward to having a few more, I guess, in that regard. Welcome back from your vacation. Hope Thank you had a good time. Yeah. I think that's everything for me. Okay, good, thank you. 
And, and, and you know, on behalf of you know, all our council and the people of the town, also, also all the people that participated in yeah. Hockeyville, and good yeah. job, you and your committee, and, and all those that, uh, you know, played a part in it. Yeah. Even though we're not successful, we can keep on trying again at some oh, point yeah. in time, but uh, good job. Yeah, no, it was fun. Uh, Councillor Bobbitt. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, we attended the Kyle meeting. Also, we had a public works uh, committee meeting, and okay. wastewater committee meeting. I had lots of information. I thought the new councillors got introduced to some of the ins and outs of the town of Fall River, but uh, lots on the go. We've got lots of decisions ahead of us, and big decisions, so lots of work to do. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Councillor Medwood. Okay. Uh, I attended a Canadians that care meeting and we're looking they're looking to bring two new programming into our community and I realized that we sat around the table trying to <coughs> brainstorm who we can very really reach out to that these programs would fit with and scrounging to get minimum numbers and it made me really think, you know what, I really miss those business consortium meetings that used to take place where everybody could get together every couple months. So I have been reaching out to Derek Armstrong. I spoke with uh, Steve Henson after the meeting, uh, and I'd like to put it out on the council table, maybe for our CAO, to maybe to put word out, because I think they were a great opportunity for all types of organizations, nonprofit, businesses, even people within the community, to come to a meeting and be able to hear and know what everybody is doing, what the Friendship Center is doing for programming, the whole nine yards, and that's a platform where Communities that care, for example, can speak and say, hey, you know what, we're looking to bring this to the community. For any of you here with an organization that this fits with your programming and you want to have it, we're paying for the training. Let's connect. And instead of sitting at a table and trying to brainstorm, who can we re reach out to? So I think we've kind of lost that connection piece with those meetings not happening. So I am barking up every tree I can to say, hey, can we start putting word out that We'd like to see that come together again. It might be great and helpful too when it comes to determining what road we're going with the arena with some fundraising, some projects, things like that. It might be a great place for them to have the floor for a couple minutes and say, here's where we're at, here's where we're looking for some help and support and see what comes of it. So, um, CAO Pool, if you can maybe put a word out there to say these might be a nice thing to have come together again, I'd appreciate it. Public Works meeting, uh, the biggest one I took away from there is I would really like to see our uh, committee work towards putting some efficient communication and bylaws in place so we're ready for next year's snowfall to make sure we've got that communication with the public so we're getting the cars off the road so our operators can have the most efficient, safest work environment to do their job in. So that's kind of something I've put forward that I'd like to see us working on through the summer and into the fall so we're ready for next winter. Uh, COPP, uh, actually I was doing a patrol last night. Do we have fire chief for door check? No, we don't. Um, going by Conrad's apartment, we have two windows that have plywood off and the building's open and exposed. <coughs> I meant to mention that earlier with the other email I sent and forgot. So it's here on my list. Um, Meeting-wise for our members, I spoke to them about the possibility of our members volunteering with, uh, within the surveillance monitoring room. There's The people in attendance aren't overwhelmingly in favor of doing this. They believe their our best asset is being out on the streets on patrol, but that's not to say that in the future somebody won't be interested or members that weren't in attendance won't be interested. From a board level and perspective, we're still pursuing um, policy um, liability in regards to that. And if in, uh, we'll be meeting with uh, the local RCMP to help us with drafting that. Um, I don't think, that's I think April 20th. So we will be looking at policy and waiver and liability into place for our program and it's something I'm more than happy to share with town, chamber or anybody else involved in that if um, they're wanting to look at maybe piggybacking on it or uh, using it as a template to draft something overall for whomever does end up uh, volunteering. 
Uh, chamber meeting, similar conversation at the chamber table when we met. Uh, we have developed some smaller committees. We've got a crime committee, an events committee, and a promotion committee all lined up. And now we just got to figure out a um, suitable meeting time that meets mo majority of the board members' schedules so that we can all be uh, present for the meetings. You mean like the board or, or businesses? Well, I think we're going to look at trying to meet the needs of majority of the board members since we are the ones that have the voting voice. But once we do choose one that is a, a majority of the board can make, they're going to be open. I believe it's going to follow the same standard that it's open to every member. But since we're the only ones with the voting authority, then if we don't have quorum, of our directors, then we can't proceed with resolutions moving and passing of things because the general member base doesn't have that uh, authority to vote. So I think it's to focus primarily on the board and then, um, yeah, it'll be open to all members who, who can attend. Um, utilities meeting, uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about the lagoon in any depth. We kind of ran short on time, but it's stuff to be talked about. And Director Harvey said he would probably have an update for all of council for the cow on May 9th, if that's an option and doable uh, for us to discuss. And other than that, we kind of went over the valves and the proactive uh, plans they have in place for keeping us uh, up and running and updating things. Services for seniors was this afternoon. Um, that went well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, our cow with uh, JC and uh, discussing the budget. Okay. Uh, that's about all I got. All right, perfect. <coughs> uh, Councillor White. I'm not sure we put it on, but regardless, uh, on March 6th, we had uh, Mr. Levkov and his uh, associate, who are the, the senior crown and his partner, to talk about uh, crime in our community and possible options. I think it was very positive and I appreciate their being here. So we're, it's a work in progress trying to slow down crime. I, I can't quantify it, but I sense some good things are happening <coughs> recently in the community. On March 11th, the Immigrant Services had a, uh, a sled day at uh, Taylor Hill, which was just awesome. Uh, a lot of uh, our immigrant people and others uh, attended, and I want to thank uh, Tim Hortons and Flavin for providing the hot chocolate and the, uh, the hot dogs, which is very kind of them. I want to thank uh, Tracy and uh, Councillor Boychuk and her team for Hockeyville. What a good job you've done. Uh, our Swan Valley Tigers hockey team are the West Bend Champs. Congratulations to the coaches and the players and the parents. I think it's important to thank the three Lions clubs of our three communities, uh, Bozeman, Minnetonas, and Swan area. And over 500 people out on the ice uh, on the Billy Beal Classic. I can't imagine how much money they made, but all that money is going to go to medical service travel. And what a compliment to our Lions Club and our communities for <coughs> gathering like that. Uh, Live Barn, I think we've mentioned, but I haven't. Uh, uh, Director Fedorchuk and uh, Councillor Tr Tracy for uh, making that happen. Uh, it's, it's now accessed by people all over the world. Wherever Wi-Fi goes, so you can watch <laughs> your kids play hockey. Other than the, other than the ones that people have to pay to get in, mm -hmm. so it's a free, a free, uh, a free thing for the community. Awesome. And uh, Swan Valley Sports Fish had a hundred people out following the Billy Beal Classic using the same holes, and I believe the Knights of Columbus uh, came out and cooked their lunch for all those kids. So there's nearly a hundred adults and children out there. So I want to thank the fish guys for that family <coughs> coordinated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you have a question for Councilor White? Actually, if I'm okay to just put <coughs> back on a comment to your report when you mentioned the Crown Attorney. Now, this didn't occur at the meeting, but in my COPP meeting, we do have a liaison that works with Justice and often at the public courts building. Um, and we are being heard. The message is being heard. What tends to happen, as we heard in our meeting with the Crown Attorney as the lawyers kind of discuss and then they go to the judge, they present a, a sentence, the judge usually agrees and case closed. 
what's happening now is the judges are aware of what's going on in our community. Lawyers are having their discussion, coming up to the bench, the judge is saying, not in that community, give me a consequence that's suitable. They're sending the lawyers back and telling the lawyers to get a new consequence in place. So we are being heard and we are starting to see that trickle through the courts. So just thought I'd share that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Powell. Um, most things were all mentioned here by this point, but um, uh, I do have to say that Council Borchuk and myself attended the 2023 budget, and many thanks to Eileen Clark for giving the invite for that. It was really well, it was, very, it was great to be a part of. Um, we attended a public works meeting, um, a, a CAL meeting. Uh, we also, um, we also, uh, Discuss some partnerships with, uh, you know, with the possibilities of rent proposals at some point. Um, I'd also like to congratulate the Swan Valley Stampeders on making it to the next round and playing for the Turnbull Cup. And good luck to them. And it's the first time I think in history that they they have made it this far. I think I think. Um, and just I know that Dwayne or Council uh, White has mentioned about this. Congratulations to the Swan Valley Tigers for their team and for their coaching staff as they uh, brought home a lead. <coughs> and that's the first time that's happened with the high school hockey team as well. Um, and we will be having a library meeting tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, yes, so, uh, yeah, Councillor Powell, does the Stan Peters did make it to the semifinals on the Triple Cup? <laughs> before COVID and we lost to the Portage Terriers and I believe this worship had to wear one of those jerseys for a meeting. So hopefully we don't have to do that this year. Um, the Municipal Relations Committee uh, had a few meetings with uh, uh, Reed Gate and Swan Valley West and their representatives regarding the creation of the fire board. Uh, and of those discussions uh, just last week, uh, His Worship signed the uh, Memorandum of Understanding to uh, create that board and uh, proceed with uh, the finer details to make it operational. On the 14th, uh, again, uh, uh, the Indigenous Services Committee and Rec or pardon me, your Recreation Committee uh, met with a uh, uh, potential partner regarding the uh, arena uh, construction or repair and those discussions will be ongoing. Uh, later that evening on the 14th, uh, we had our Committee of the Whole and a special meeting with the uh, Johnson Control um, report and another draft budget for our review. And then on the 16th, uh, CEO Fool and myself uh, were in Winnipeg uh, with a meeting with Public Safety Canada regarding the RCP contract policing engagement session. We'll Actually consulted with the municipalities uh, regarding an upcoming uh, RCP contract renewal. So sounds like the message is getting through to uh, those guys up in Ottawa that uh, maybe they should be consulting with their contractor before they agree to a bill and just uh, download it onto us. So that was good to see. Um, we are not alone. A lot of our concerns were echoed by the other Manitoba municipal. Uh, municipalities that have contracts with RCMP along with the province of Manitoba um, and Public Safety Canada did uh, indicate that they will be in touch with the town of Swan River uh, specifically along with everybody else to have individual meetings to continue those engagement discussions further uh, for the renew or possible renewal of the uh, RCMP contract uh, in 2032 which is nine years away, but uh, they need to start the process to move that forward. And that's all I got. All right, well, thank you. And I guess for myself, uh, I've been away for a, a couple of weeks and uh, it's good to be back again. And and uh, kind of like from from the sun straight into the frying pan, more or less, I can say. And uh, it's been a very busy last few days. and. Uh, and uh, mind-boggling, but that's uh, that's to be expected. Firstly, I want to thank uh, Deputy Mayor Morio for taking on the role for myself and and heading up our meetings and uh, and and uh, just making or having those discussions either with the RCMP or with uh, uh, Swan Valley West and so forth. And I do appreciate that. 
I understand that everything has been managed in a professional way, and I appreciate that too. Um, uh, for myself, I guess, uh, first of all, I would just say that, you know, I, I have some meetings that are set up with the uh, Provincial Justice Minister. I believe that's going to be next week. It's kind of an ongoing thing with justice. Um, I do have several other meetings, in fact, tomorrow and, and Thursday I'm going to be in Winnipeg, actually, and fulfilling my role as Parkland Director for the AMM, and this is uh, lobby days, so we'll be seeing uh, members of uh, the government and ministers and so forth tomorrow, and then we'll see the opposition members on Thursday. And uh, we do, uh, as was mentioned, uh, uh, the budget for Manitoba was revealed here a couple weeks ago, and uh, good news in there was the increase in municipal funding that will help municipalities across the, the province, including ourselves. So we do thank the province for recognizing the increase in municipal funding and, 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 uh, and, and their support. And with our uh, lobby, uh, that will be one thing that we'll continue to talk about uh, at our meetings, but also physical infrastructure and social infrastructure and public safety, of course, is uh, four of the big things that we'll be uh, talking in the next few days. So I look forward to that. My first, uh, my first one, as far as lobby days goes, um, and of course, the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding and uh, the work that has gone through with Swan Valley West and with our own uh, committee on um, bringing this forward. I think it's uh, a positive thing, the two municipalities that can work together, and it just goes to show that we can. And uh, it's for the betterment of all our ratepayers, uh, for public safety, uh, regardless if it's our, you know, health or life or, or uh, homes and so forth. And I definitely hope that that can expand to uh, all our municipal partners <coughs> of the valley uh, as well. So this is a, a good step in, in the right direction. Uh, it was mentioned, uh, Swan Valley Tigers Championship, first time ever, and definitely that was uh, a great win for those young people. And I went and watched their game on, on Saturday night, and boy, were they ever fired up and, and roaring out there. But uh, what an outstanding game, and of course, uh, the, the game in Nipwa where they won in overtime was probably a pretty special time for those young people and, and congratulations to them and, and to their coaching staff and, and to all the, the high school people that are out there. Stamp Peters, Stamp Peters playoffs, here we go again. So here on this, this Friday, get out there and support our Stamp Peters and hopefully uh, they can go all the way this time. So uh, we definitely wish uh, your team and and, uh, and your staff uh, all the best and keep rolling along. And with that, I think that's all that I have to report uh, for myself. So anyways, moving on uh, with uh, CO Pools uh, report. I did uh, put on a brief report of, of some meetings and, and some unfinished business <coughs> on some other items that uh, I guess it's not so much smaller, but the abuse and molestation policy is coming to council as required by our insurance company. So that's been in review. Council will see that shortly. At the public safety meeting last week, I did meet with the provincial reps for our community safety and well-being project, and they let me know that late next week they will be selecting their consultant. So I'm, I'm guessing our first meeting will be several weeks after that. Uh, and it's on my report that we are putting out a town on notice uh, for the information gathered from our Crown Attorney's meeting regarding community and victim impact statements and uh, from Staff Sergeant Duncan <coughs> information on the Safer Communities and Neighborhood Act and uh, how we can take advantage of those items. Uh, currently working on the fire truck procurement summary report. Uh, the vehicles have been, or they're on their way out of the storage facility, the impounded vehicles. Uh, so they'll be moved into town. Uh, scheduled a meeting with the community foundation to, to make sure that they are aware of our CR, current CRA rules regarding uh, community grants. Uh, and the, the CFO PMH is trying to schedule a meeting with the town. Uh, he was hoping for mid this week, but it might have to go into next week. But I'm, I am looking for a rep 
to meet me or meet with me with the PMH CFO regarding the CT scanner. So I, I don't have a date yet, but I will email out the committee. Okay. We have a, a rep on PMH. You want something separate? I'm, I've just been contacted by the CFO saying they want to meet with the town of Yeah, and I, I think I've got that invite already. Yeah. You don't have yeah. a date though? No. Okay, put me on the list. Okay. Thank you. Uh, questions? Uh, if you're done? Yeah. Okay, okay I'm just uh, looking at the, the uh, Center for Safer Communities and Neighborhood Act. In a second bullet there, allows for successful search warrants on problem houses with communities where without a search warrant cannot be approved. What does that mean? Uh, so I guess it, it, it refers to the act and how the act works. So you, you cannot use the Safer Communities and Neighborhoods Act if you're a police officer or elected official or a bylaw officer. It's for the community to provide complaints uh, to the province or the feds, I guess. Uh, and according to that act, they must be looked into. So it's just information to the community that they have more power in that act than an RCMP officer or a bylaw officer. If it came from me, it doesn't count. It must come from the community. There must they must follow the rules. So we are we are going to inform people of what that is and what that means, and then give them instructions on how to follow through with it. Did they talk much about the victim and community impact statements? Uh, that that was discussed in our Crown Attorney's meetings. That's going to be the second part of the town on notice, what those are, and then we will provide copies how to get the, the forms. They must be filled out properly. It will have instructions on how to fill out and where to send them. Yeah. Yeah, I, think, I think that leads to what uh, Councilor Medley was saying. The more of that stuff that comes down from, from our team and uh, from the community, the more likely the people who make decisions relative to where people go will, will listen to us. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, what is the PLC upgrade? I swear I've heard this recently, but I Pro forget. Programmable logic service. Yes. Okay, thank you. See, I don't have those notes in front of me. <coughs> okay, anything further? All right, so we'll move on to 8. 8.1. Resolved with the conditional use application number 1, 2023 by Hayden and Vivian Rooks be to allow a secondary suite at lot 13, plan 3227, also known as 225 Crescent Drive, be approved. Moved by Councillor Bobick, second by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Medrick. First one, I think it's great to see that, uh, well, one, it's an unfortunate circumstance that they find themselves having to rebuild a home. But two, I like the foresight into thinking about making that secondary suite, so it's a, another viable rental <coughs> option and opportunity for housing, so I'm happy with that. Further discussion? All in favor? Yes. It's carried. Eight point two. Resolve that uh, resolve uh, the April 4th, 2023 regular scheduled council meeting be rescheduled to take place Tuesday, April the 11th, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. in council chambers. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? This is just because we are, will be away at the AMM Spring Convention. Further discussion? All in favor? I was just going to confirm that, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's carried. Yeah, sometimes it happens that way. Uh, 8.3. Result of Swan Valley Crisis Center audited financial statements for the year ended March 31st, 2022. Be received. Moved by Councillor Koychak, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Yes. Carried. Uh, 8.4. Result of the Town of Swan River approve a grant to the Swan Valley Crisis Center in the amount of, we don't have an amount there. Is it basically the same thing as what we gave last year? 
The town for a long time has given them a thousand dollars. They've always put that number in. This request did not have a number. They're asking for any support we wouldn't be it. In the past, when I've spoke to her, she thought that that in a month, if they needed more, they would ask for more. So, so if we want to put a thousand dollars there, go ahead. My personal opinion is until the current sitting council comes to an agreement on how we're going to handle grants, we probably shouldn't proceed with awarding them until we have a clear procedure or protocol for it. Okay. Council White. I have no problem with that concept whatsoever, but in the meantime, uh, I think the crisis is when there's 600 people in need, 400 meetings with children and parents. Uh, We'll, we'll work out the process eventually, and, I, and nothing wrong with that thought. But in the meantime, I think this is a pretty needy area. Uh, I think it's, it's a thousand what we've done in the past, let's do the same. So it was moved by uh, Councillor Poichuk. Okay, so go ahead. You have a question? Um, no. Okay. So then, um, do you agree with the thousand dollars? Council. Is there any other suggestions? Yeah, or other suggestions. That's what we've done in the past. Yeah. Right. And it's been a long standing. Yeah. Until we have a procedure in place. Is that a request to table? It is, yeah. Okay. So then if you make a motion to table, do you have a seconder table? Mr. Bob, uh, all in favor? I guess it's automatic then, right? Uh, don't you vote to take it? Yeah, to vote yeah. to take it. Okay. Okay. So vote to table then. All in favor? Opposed? Councillor? Who's opposed? Or who's opposed? Me. I'm a no. Okay. A no to what? I'm, I'm opposed to the resolution. So, so you'd like to table it? No, no he's no. A, he, this is a vote to oppose to uh, table it. Oh, okay. Okay. So we didn't have a vote from you. You're no. you're not voting. No. No. Okay. So then, <laughs> so then, the, the motion to the the motion to. Uh, table has been defeated. So then we'll vote on the resolution then. That's correct. Okay. So uh, resolve that the town of Swan River approve a grant in, to the Swan Valley Crisis Center in the amount of $1,000, which was moved by Councilor uh, Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Further discussion? Councilor Bobbitt. I have no reason not to think that we should give $1,000 to Crisis Center. I, I don't get me wrong here, but I do agree we need a policy in place to put this issue to bed. So okay. For that reason, I'll be voting against it. All right. Further discussion, Councillor Boychuk. So I'm kind of assuming that that will be <coughs> the General Government and Finance Committee, right? Uh, kind of figuring that yeah. out. Like, could we set aside? Could we schedule a meeting to kind of do that, hash something out, and then present to Council? We could. Yeah, I don't. I don't see the point in holding things up that we've done for years on end for this <coughs> because it has been like um, CEO Pool said to us. It's been very tumultuous and brrr, so I. I don't want to hold things up that need to be done, and I think we can kind of figure it out. But definitely on the smaller ones we need to. But we'll yeah. stick to the resolution. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. Uh, well, just to reiterate, I'm not necessarily opposed to awarding money. I just think we need a policy and procedure in place so we're fair and we're consistent with how we're awarding the grants. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Yes. Opposed? It's carried. Uh, there we are. 8.5. Result of the resignation of Brendan Fordorchuk from the position of Recreation Director be accepted. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Bobic. Discussion? 
With that, uh, we regretfully accept the, or almost accept, I can't say that, but uh, uh, we do uh, definitely thank uh, you for your time. I know you're on the video here tonight. Uh, for your time and dedication to uh, the town of Swan River. Uh, as I mentioned to you in a, in a previous conversation, uh, you know, coming from, you know, humble beginnings and, and uh, in the rec uh, area, we do uh, appreciate your service to uh, this community and definitely wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Further discussion? Just, just to add a thank you to Brandon for his over 10 years of service. He started as a laborer and worked his way up to director. Uh, he's, we'll miss his initiative. We are definitely going to miss his knowledge. And uh, we thank you for your service. And good luck in the future. OK, for, the, dis for the discussion, Council White. Uh, sitting that, uh, that template perfectly, I remember uh, very recently when we were short of staff, and I'm driving home, and I see this person with a lot of dirt on him, and dirty and musty, trimming trees. And I, I can't say the name because maybe it's a violation of union something or other. But when I see people get out and do the jobs that need to be done, and uh, Brendan, that was you, sir, so uh, that's the kind of stuff I like to see. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Yes. It's carried. 8.6. Whereas Swan Valley, where. Uh, All right. Uh, whereas Swan Valley Youth Soccer wishes to purchase removable teen bench shelters to be owned by the town of Swan River. And whereas the Swan Valley Youth Soccer has applied for a grant from the Community Foundation of Swan Valley on the condition that the grant be given to the town, of, uh, to the town and the town have a written agreement with Swan Valley Youth Soccer for this project. Therefore, being resolved, the mayor and the chief administrative officer be authorized to sign the agency agreement with Swan Valley Youth Soccer attached here to Schedule A. Moved by uh, Councillor Medwood, second by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Uh, Councillor, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, yes, quick question uh, to either CEO Poole or CEO Boganita. Does uh, this agreement uh, meet and is in, in line with the Canada Revenue Agency rules and that we're not breaking them? Short answer, yes. If CFO Ganita would wish to expand, he can. CFO Ganita. Uh, yes, uh, municipalities are, are not allowed to just flow through funds that are act as a conduit. Um, they must maintain direction and control the entirety of the project, and so that's what this agreement ensures. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Yes. It's carried. It's always good when we have groups like this that are always trying to do good for the community and especially with sport as well. So we're very lucky to have people that are forward thinking that way. Uh, I resolved that the administration initiate a hiring process for the position of recreation director. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Yes. Carried. 10, 10.1. Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 30055 to number 30079, totaling 102,260 and six cents as listed on schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5283 to number 5291, totaling $100,477 one cent as listed on schedule B. Direct deposits uh, payments totaling $15,970 and two cents as listed on schedule C. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk, discussion. Councillor Medwood. Yes, on the check register report, uh, check number 0030057, ALS Canada Limited. What is ALS Canada Limited? 
Uh, that's our uh, testing company. Oh, okay. Uh, for water samples. Okay. And um, Swan Valley Veterinary Clinic. What that, was that for? That would be services for our expired agreement for them to care for animals. Okay, so it wasn't that there was anything actually in care, it was just... No, nope, they, they, they wouldn't have accepted it anyway. Okay. Um, the one for Timrick Welding and Machine. What check number? Uh, 30070, it's for 1918 and 12 cents. Uh, that would have been for one of the equipment. I'll have to see the invoice to see which specific okay. one it was for. But repair to? Repair to. Just yeah. something. And the other one was D's Electric. Um, it has changed burnt lights at the fire hall. So this is what it costs to replace light bulbs. Chief Irochuk, can you answer the question? Yeah, no, that was for replacing light bulbs. We replaced four fixtures, um, plus a couple outlets that were damaged uh, while they were here. So it's a complete fixture change uh, in above B number four. Okay, so it's not just light bulbs then? It's, it's a fixture. Okay, yeah. I was going to say those are some pretty pricey light bulbs. <laughs> um, and the last one on the explanation one is the... Well, part of 30076, the gas bar, $887.40. Did we buy something other than um, candy bars and pop? Was there some car washes or something? Uh, director of Recreation. Uh, that's most likely for propane for the Zamboni to get filled with the gas bar. Oh, that would make some sense then. Thank you. I think that was my last one. Okay. Councilor Bollock. Uh, just for an explanation purposes, like you may see a few bills coming from T Timrick in the future. Like Timrick's kind of the new Acklands in town. Uh, the guys get lots of parts there and stuff. So there's hydraulic hoses, bolts, everything there now. So you'll see that come up quite frequently. So explain that. Further discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Yes. It's carried. 10.2. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clauses 252E and set the fees and charges for the work, works under Clause 252-1A of the Act, and whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling $5,298.12. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in the manner under subsections 252 of the 252.2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that a notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective April the 1st, 2023. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Uh, Councillor Medwood. Are most of these commercial or residential? Um, uh, CFO Grida. Both. And then my next question is, is this for additional services beyond what the regular property taxes would cover? Uh, well, I should clarify. Uh, any residential property that has a dump garbage dumpster <laughs> is considered commercial. So I, I guess they're all commercial then. <coughs> and, and so any, any property that has a dumpster is not taxed, it's invoiced. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? <coughs> All in favor? It's carried. We miss you every once in there, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Morio. Ten point three. 
Result of the financial statements for the 12 months ending December 31st, 2022 be adopted as received. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion. All in favor? Yes. It's carried. 11. 11.1. 11 Result of the bylaw 2 2023 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a rate for collection of residential waste and recycling material for a special service for the town of Swan River for 2023 be read a first time. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? Councilor Medwood? Um, I wasn't sure if I was to do it in the public hearing or here, but um, I'm really not in favor of the increased rate for recycling, especially when 43% of it ends up in a landfill. So if that contract is coming up for renewal, I think we seriously need to rethink how we're handling our waste management and again, looking into composting options or other reduction and reuse ways to clean up how we're handling it is I think something we need to take a much more serious look at. Further discussion? All in favor? Yes. Opposed? It's carried. Result of the bylaw 3, 2023 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to repeal bylaws 1, 2022, 12, 2022 be read a first time. Be read a first time. Second time. Sorry, it should be a second time. Yeah. Okay, uh, be read a second time. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by <coughs> Councilor Bovic. Discussion, Councilor Medwood. Help me understand just exactly what it is we're repealing. I believe it's the organizational bylaw and the procedures bylaw. They were passed with the, normally at the end of a bylaw, you repeal the previous ones. Those were not updated and we're repealing the, the ones prior to that. So this bylaw only repeals uh, the previous organizational and procedural bylaws. Okay, thank you. I wasn't sure because I swear we just had this uh, not too long ago. So okay. Yeah, thank you had the first that reading. Was, that was yeah, first the first reading. reading. Yes. Yeah, that's this what I'm meaning. Like one. now that you explained it, I got my head wrapped around it again. Okay. All in favor? Yes. It's carried. Eleven point three, resulted bylaw number. 3, 2023, being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River to repeal bylaw 1, 2022, and 12, 2022, be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Okay, it's a recorded vote. All in favor? Yes. It's carried. It's unanimous. And we have nothing to go on camera about. So result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 8.29 p.m. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Bobbing. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Yes. We're adjourned. <laughs>